Welcome to another P5.js video. This one is, this is a really exciting big moment. I don't know if you're aware of this. First of all, you might be wondering, uh, I aged about two and a half years uh, since the last video in this series. Not to mention the fact that one of those years was 2020. I mean, maybe you're watching this in the future where I've redone the previous videos and now I look much younger. I have no idea. The point is I redo videos from time to time. Here I am in a big important video about what is a variable. And in this video, for you, at the very first time, things will animate in your P5.js canvas. Every sketch that I've shown you so far has two blocks of code a setup block and a draw block. Now, these are actually known as functions. They're functions that I am defining in the code, the setup function, the draw function, and a lot more about defining your own functions and reusing your functions and all of that to come later in this video series. But for now, we can think of these blocks of code as defining the flow of the program. The setup function happens once and only once, the moment the sketch begins. This is why create canvas goes there because this is the kind of thing you want to do at the beginning, just once. You don't want to make canvases multiple times and you don't want to make a canvas at the end, right? That wouldn't make any sense. So the flow of the beginning of the program is set up, make the canvas. Now, while we're not making use of this fact that I'm about to reveal to you, draw happens forever. Another word for that might be in a loop. Whatever code is in draw, Lines of code execute in order. Do the first line, background, then draw an ellipse. Now we're at the end of draw. Go back to the first line of code. Do it again, do it again. At the end, go back, do it again, do it again. This is a forever loop. Now, of course, it has to stop at some point. Maybe you close the browser, you turn off your computer. <laughs> don't throw, I was gonna say you throw it out the window. Don't do that. It's a nice computer. You don't need to throw it out the window. <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be the moment where you're gonna really love your computer as it starts to animate. But, so this is a strange thing. Why would it work this way? Why would we do something once and then have other code happen all the time? Now, this is not necessarily how all software works. All software does have a flow, an order of operations, but this this flow, this style is very common for an animation program, for a graphics program, and I'm going to show you why. Let's take a look at where I left off with my simple P5 example. So I'm going to simplify it even further. I'm going to get rid of this uh, rectangle so that there's just an ellipse. Um, let me put it in the center and kind of get rid of the idea of color just for a moment. I just have a simple sketch with one circle in the middle. And we can see <laughs> the flow of the program is happening. It's running. Setup happened oh, a while ago because I talk way too much, obviously, and it created that canvas. And now it's drawing the background and the circle and the background and the circle and the background and the circle. It's happening over and over again. But we are not harnessing the power of that fact. We're not seeing anything change. In order for us to understand better how this flow is really working, we need something that changes, something that varies inside of the draw function itself. This is why, I'm using that word very intentionally, we're talking about variables. I need to add a variable to this sketch. So I definitely want to take maybe a deeper look at what it means to be a variable probably in the next video because there's going to be a bunch about this, but just to, just to kind of like an entry point into this. Let's think about what would it mean for me to be able to somehow move this circle with my mouse? Well, what's defining where the circle is? The number 200 and the number 150, those are literal values. That number 200 can never be anything but, it's a very sad life for the number 200. It can never be anything but the number 200 itself. But if I could just sort of describe in there instead something about like where the mouse is, Right? I'm just going to write the mouse's X position. It made all sorts of weird colors happen. It's giving me an error. Obviously, I can't do that. What I can do, what a variable is, is it is a named entity. It is a key word that stores something. And in this case, I want it to store a number. Variables can store all sorts of kinds of things, and we're going to see that as we go on. But in this case, I want something that stores, that re references a particular value. And in P5, we get some variables for free. And one of those variables is mouse X. And another one, by the way, is mouse Y. In the P5 reference, we can see this described quite clearly. The system variable mouse X always contains the current horizontal position of the mouse relative to 0, 0 of the canvas. Meaning, the moment I write mouse X here and the sketch reruns, look at that. You see where my mouse is? That's where the ellipse is. I'm going to move it over. Ah, 
That's where the ellipse is. So what's really happening here? Did I lock the ellipse to the mouse in some magic way? No, I'm just, the draw loop is happening over and over again. Every time, it's always getting the dynamic current value of mouse x. The circle's x position doesn't have to be where mouse x is. For example, there's no reason why I couldn't change and put mouse x here for the y value. And now as I move my mouse left and right, all oh, this makes me very uncomfortable, it moves up and down. But think about the kinds of interactions you might be able to do. For example, there's no reason why I couldn't put mouse Y here in fill. So as I move the mouse up and down, the circle gets darker up and brighter as I move down. So this is really your starting point. What can you do just with the system variables mouse x and mouse y? One thing you could do is actually create a simple painting program. And so I'm going to just add a few more things to this and leave you with that as a prompt before you come back to the next video. I'm going to go back to something more traditional and just make the fill 255. I'm going to put the ellipse at mouse x and mouse y, and I'm going to just make it smaller. And incidentally, I don't remember whether I covered this before. If it's a circle, I don't need to have both arguments. I could just put in the one argument as the diameter. And also, I could change this to circle. Now, I'm going to do something slightly unorthodox. I'm going to take this background, call to background. I'm going to remove it and put it into setup. I've run the sketch again. I'm not going to move my mouse over there. I want you to imagine. What do you think is going to happen? Pause the video and see if you can predict what's going to happen. OK, are you back? Here we go. Look at that. Why am I seeing the trail of that circle as it smears across the canvas? Well, the reason why I was seeing it move across the canvas is I was always covering up where it was previously by drawing the background over, again, over and over again and draw. Background circle, background circle, background circle. So you see that illusion of motion. If the background's only drawn once in setup, suddenly I'm not erasing it anymore. I'm seeing where the circle is and where it is now and where it is now and where it is now. So this is this idea of having flexibly being able to decide what order things happen and when they happen. I can now create a, a bit of a painting program. I might want to do a couple things to this. For example, what if I, I want to give it a little bit of alpha. So now you can see like the longer it's there, that alpha builds up. That allows a little flexibility. You could play with size, play with color. But there's one more thing that I think is worth noting in this particular video before I leave you to see what you make yourself. I talked about these two blocks of code, set up and draw these two functions as defining the flow of the sketch. In truth, these are actually just events. The setup event happens once at the beginning. The draw event happens continuously. And this loop isn't necessarily continuously at some arbitrary rate. It's locked to 60 frames per second. That's the native default. This will run the draw loop 60 times per second. It could run slower if you add too much stuff in draw and it can't keep up. But that's where it gets locked to. There are many other events that we can define. I've written another function here, mouse pressed. This is an event that sits and waits. It might never happen. You could define the mouse press function and have it never happen. It only happens if you press the mouse, if you click the mouse. There's a mouse released event and many more that you could look up in the P5 reference, but this is a good place to get started. Setup happens once, it's ready to go. Draw is just like, I'm gonna happen as much as I can, and the mouse press function is very patient, just sits and waits. What happens if I take background and put that in mouse pressed. I've added mouse pressed. Note it's the same syntax, function, the name of the function, parentheses, curly bracket, close curly bracket. I'm going to take background and I'm going to copy it into mouse pressed. Now as I move the mouse, I could try to write my name. And I'd be like, oh, I messed up. I want to click the mouse and voila. I've drawn the background over it. I've erased what was there previously. I'm realizing there might be one other question that's in your head that I'm anticipating. Let's go back to just for a moment where background was in fact in draw. If it's drawing the background and then the circle and then the background and then the circle, why isn't it flickering? Why don't I see background circle, background circle, background circle? Well, maybe it happens so fast that I don't see it, but that's not really the case. Take a second. Let's say I just put background and put it at the end of draw. Now that circle is gone. I will never ever see it. So on the one hand, this kind of leads me to realize that background is something of a misnomer. I mean, it's, it's well named because really 
as we're using it, the way we're using it is to draw a solid color in the background of the sketch, but ultimately it's just cover the sketch with a particular color. P5, and most animation systems work this way, it has a moment where it chooses to update what it shows to the viewer, and that happens at the very end of draw. So no matter what you have in draw, you don't see the internal changes, you only see the end result. So taking background back out, I'm now back to the painting program, and there's plenty of things you could try, I think, but just as a little prompt before you get to the next video, how can you expand on this idea with your own design ideas, size, color, um, changing the way what mouse X and mouse Y actually apply to? There's lots of possibilities there, and I look forward to seeing what you make. See you in the next video.